Good morning on day one. So this is the start of the North Wales Pilgrim's Way. This is the symbol or markers that we'll be following along this trail. So the walk started by going through some really old industrial areas dating back probably a few hundred years utilizing the water that uh, comes through this valley as you can see the path has nicely progressed into the trees and some shade because it's already quite hot today which is really surprising for August arriving at St Winifred's Shrine and Well the visitor centre and museum will guide you through well over a thousand years of history for this site. The well's miraculous healing waters have meant that this site has remained a site of pilgrimage throughout its entire history and you can actually still bathe in the waters of the pool out the front at certain times or drink from the actual waters of the well. So here is where you can actually get some well water. Well that was a little bit harder than I thought it would be, it looks like the handle's a little bit broken here or I'm just not effectively using it very well. But anyway here we have some water from the Sacred Spring. On leaving the first holy well of this pilgrimage you first pass the whole way level mine and then the trail actually gets quite steep as you climb out of the valley up onto the tops. Don't forget to look back though as the uh, view across Liverpool and the world has been well worth the climb. The trail now turns west as you make your way along the high ground. This allows for some great views of the Cluidian Hills as well as the odd limestone quarry. There's also a chance you'll come across the odd bemused animal. Well it really is a hot day today. I'm sweating as I've been coming over the top of there. Um, Fortunately now, found a little bit of shade and uh, hopefully a little respite as we come up to uh, one of the key stop locations in a short while and uh, hopefully coffee, maybe a cake, who knows, we'll see. Fantastic Friary was once a Francescan retreat centre. That has now closed, but St David's Church, the Shrine, and the gardens are still open today visitors. The Friary Gardens has a trail with Stations of the Cross and a Shrine. The stamp for your Pilgrim's Passport can be found at St Pio's Cafe and Gift Shop and one of the Friars will happily stamp it for you. Well suitably refreshed, back on the uh, trail again. So this is the kind of natural high ground which is, is where the ancient trails or pathways would have taken. The path leaves the tarmac and makes its way across a field where birds of prey can sometimes be seen. It's back to the tarmac again as you pass through Loch, although this is only a short section and you soon find yourself back in the trackways, although these ones did have a much older feel about them and uh, really did make for some very pleasant walking. The changing view across the estuary showed that I was making good progress. The trail starts to twist and turn a little bit as you pass a farm at Garrig and then you also kind of pass through some other small holdings and buildings but the trails do flow one from another quite easily and navigation is not a problem. I'm just stopping for a, a breather. It's really a hot day today but uh, it's just nice to get a little bit of shade, sit down uh, cool down and kind of just take a breather for five seconds before you uh, embark on the next stage of the journey. I soon got a full view of that next stage as I walked down the trail in the next field. This is also where a fruit laden cherry tree caught my eye. The next key site is Mine Achwivan which is a 10th century Celtic wheeled cross with intricate carvings on all sides. There's a pilgrim stamp for this site which is located in a bird box by the kissing gate. The trail now takes you back up onto higher ground with some excellent views of Liverpool Bay. 
It then makes its way round to the village of Beth Engam. You then follow the road down through Trelogan and back out into the country. Just about to join this style, I've just been through a village, no shop, no anything. A scorching day, I've run out of water. And look what I found. It's a rescue centre with a cafe, cold drinks, some nice people to chat to, really good. So a uh, little oasis, unexpected, but very, very welcome. The trail now makes its way across a series of fields and down some country parkland into the village of Slanassa. This is actually where you will pick up your next stamp in the village church. The church has a 15th century stained glass window which is thought to have originally been in Basingwork Abbey. There's a pub for those who still need some refreshment but for me it was just enjoy the pleasant walk out this picturesque village and back out onto the trail again. This is a series of fields, sure here, so. some of them were quite interesting as they were being harvested at the time. It was the final couple of miles and the finish was almost in sight. However, the tarmac roads which had been baking in the sun were particularly unpleasant. The views were still spectacular though and I soon reached a style which marked the start of the final section, a climb up Gop Hill. I'm kind of just at the uh, style where you kind of turn into the woods and as it's at the kind of um, ridge line of the uh, hill here beautiful breeze blowing and I'm just sitting under a tree in the shade and of course at the cafe even though I did have a cold drink I did take the extra precaution of getting another one so I think it's an opportune moment to sit down cool down and uh, just get ready for the last climb of the day it's a steady climb up through the trees as you pass by a number of limestone quarries Probably the source for the mound. Well, all day I've been looking for nice places to sit down with views. And to be honest, this is about the first one where there's actually a bench. And the view is spectacular, of course. This man made mound was the second highest in Britain, with the highest being Silbury Hill in Wiltshire near Avebury. The uh, modern woodlands block some of the view to the north, but in ancient times this mound would have had a commanding view of the surrounding country and all of the peoples of the time would have been able to see it. It's quite a steep descent down into the village of Trelaunid, but this is where you pick up your final stamp and the finish for today. So that kind of concludes day one. Uh, it's been an absolutely scorching day, really, really hot. Um, just just the kind of at the end there, while we were coming down from a got, and I got chatting to a gentleman, um, obviously from Australia, and I kind of commenting how nice the weather was for the day. <laughs> and his feeling was, yes, it was nice for Northern Queensland, not actually Wales. So it gives you a kind of uh, another person's perspective on how hot it is today. Um, I'll actually have a look when I get back to see uh, what the kind of temperature of the day was, I don't actually know. But uh, judging by previous weather in the last kind of few weeks, uh, we've, we've been setting new records here, so um, couldn't, couldn't have asked for a hotter or, or drier day. Anyway, um, till day two. So that's Pilgrim's Passport at the end of day one.